Captain CA here, Flats Class fans, and for those of you that are new to the channel, welcome aboard. This is where I teach you everything you want to know about inshore fishing. Now, I just pulled back in the drive here, back in the boat barn, and I visited Sodium Fishing, where there just are so many choices. Uh, I wanted to pick up some bigger spools of braid. Now, this video is not about me telling you how great Power Pro is. I've got a lot of videos on that, more to come. But it is about, does braid color matter? Does it? Check out Bernie and I on a recent fishing trip. And I'm gonna come back here and set some stuff up. We're gonna talk about braid color. coming at you there's a second one behind him that's the one you're gonna get he's running for it nice <laughs> smart move to go for fish number two even though the first one was bigger because the first one was definitely wise to it <laughs> he was bigger nice cast and the right you you were lined up on them right where the bait goes away i mean that's when they think that it's their idea that's when it always goes down the right way nicely done nicely done you know if you were to look at the fish activities calendar today it would tell you that today is a below average day for activity but we are proving that wrong yeah, they're, moving they're moving around i think this weather definitely is superseding that that's the one thing that those fish activity calendars can't tell you well you actually caught the unicorn today you've caught a redfish the snook and everything else are chewing yeah that first one might have been a 27 because this one here is going to be like a 23 24 maybe a 24 and a half a good fish. That's a solid fish. Oh yeah, pretty fish. I'm gonna go ahead and get a quick picture. See that color is perfect for them. That's the color they like. See what he just did? Buried so, it in the grass. I don't mind the grass sometimes getting on top of their head because it calms them down. It's That's almost true. like it, a bass. Yeah, like a bass. It settles them right down. Settles them right down. You get a, you get a big wad of grass on a fish that's you look like you might lose, and if he gets it over his eyes, all of a sudden he settles right down. But that is very respectable down there. Yeah, two foot of water today. way back here. Yeah, yeah. that is awesome. I mean, your leader's really not that long. No, you try to get away with shorter, shorter leaders. Just so I can cast it more accurately. I can get more line and get the bay closer to the tip. Yep. <laughs> he was in one of those holes that were up there in that flooded grass up there. Cool. That is a good one. Definitely get a pick of that one. Oh, that's going to sure. fall right out of his mouth. Well, it's in it, there. Was, it was in there past the barb. It's got that click. Yeah. Still chilly here <laughs> on the nature coast. Um, so I brought a thermos of coffee today. All right. Bernie, one hell of an angler. And if you picked up on it, uh, Bernie actually uh, said something to the effect that he likes using shorter leaders. So does that hurt him with braid color? Well, in many cases, I will tell you, 
braid color does not matter. I'm going to just preface the whole instructional video with that. But if I told you, you could count on getting a couple more bites a day by making your braid color a little bit more likely to be invisible, would you do it? Now, once again, I will say, I am not going to talk about, you know, all the qualities of Power Pro, but I am going to talk to you about the color. So one of the things that, that I like to do when I'm fishing is I do like to pick colors that are going to disappear because based off water clarity, light conditions, and sometimes where I'm fishing, I feel like color is important. That's right. Because the way I look at it is if I get three, four, five, maybe a half a dozen bites extra a day because I did something like that, it's worth it. Now, if you're a natural bait fisherman, probably doesn't matter. But if you're an artificial guy, this can matter. It really can matter. So when I have, like today, beautiful sun, bluebird skies, and clear water, the three colors I typically want to use as braid colors would be gray, white, believe it or not, and what I just picked up blue, which has turned into one of my favorite braid colors, especially for tarpon fishing. So that's what I use. Do you know what the number one selling color of braid is? I know you're all mouthing it right now. Oh, it's green, green. It is. In some situations though, green is very visible to fish, but where it does work well, is in the summer months where we have a little bit more color in the water. That's just a nice way of saying we got algae in the water. We've got algae in the water. That's when that green is really strong for us. So I do use moss green line quite a bit then. Um, other colors you might think to use are like tan. That's a good color to use for braid. There's not too many companies that make that. Um, but those colors for me are pretty normal to use in a lot of situations. And I think that's why green gets chosen so much. Now a dark green uh, or a black onyx would probably serve you better when you're skipping docks or casting underneath mangroves and places like that. Or in my case, lots of times where I fish here on the nature coast, I've got this kelpie grass uh, and eelgrass in some places. And I just feel like those lines blend in better uh, when I'm moving a bait through there. So typically I do that. Now, anytime you can shrink the diameter of the braid, it's going to reduce the reflectivity of the braid. So it's not going to be as visible. So those of you that are using six and eight pound braids, you're probably fine. It's when you get to 10 and 15 and 20 where it matters more. So you're probably thinking, so when would I throw this color? this bright aqua green look. Well, when you're on slack line pl presentations, like you're fishing a Ned rig, something like that, or you're drifting a plastic shrimp, anything like that, it's nice to be able to see if the line jumps and you need that high visibility line. If you've got it, you're gonna see the fish. I mean, it's, you're going to see the bite and then you know you've got the fish. So it's important and it's hard to see that if you're using green line. So those high vis lines and lots of guys like to use high vis lines like yellows and oranges and things like that. If they are bait fishing or they've got two clients on the front of the boat, that way they can see where these, these, these lures are going. How many times have I coached you guys matching the hatch and this, that, and the other thing, and you can't see that lure, but if you've got that brighter line on, you know about where your lure is in proximity to the cover that you're throwing to. So that's when that high vis line works. Now, do you run that all the way down to the lure? Hell no, you don't run it down to the lure. You tie on four or five feet of fluorocarbon leader or mono leader, um, whichever you choose, and it's effective. It's super effective. That's why I always say, maybe it does not matter. It might not matter. <laughs> but if you just take those, those colors into consideration uh, when you're choosing braid, I think you're going to find that you're gonna have a little bit more su success and probably build a little bit more confidence. Remember, in review, white, gray, 
blue for most clear water situations, especially like when I'm working top waters and things like that, they blend really good with the surface. If I'm using mid column stuff too in clear water, those are typically that blue is a, a color that I use a lot unless I'm in stained water where greens and tan lines work a little bit better. And then lastly, those high vis colors are going to work best uh, if, you're, if you're trying to accomplish a certain technique, but you just gotta lengthen that leader. And those really dark lines like black, like onyx black that we make and things like that, I love that for fishing shadow or fishing at night. Um, unless I need to see where the bait is or where the lure is positioned, then I might opt for high vis. So that's kind of, whoa, what are we doing here? Are we going high vis or are we going stealth? Again, does it matter? If you like what I'm teaching here on Flats Class YouTube and it's really upping your game, reward us by subscribing. Subscribe and share. If you subscribe and share, this channel can go to another level. I mean, another, another level where we're gonna be able to do a lot more things and do it a lot more frequently. You've already probably noticed that we're putting four, five, sometimes six videos up in one week now, but I'm only one man, come on. So help me out, share, subscribe, and like. Until next time, Captain C.A. Richardson signing off. Gonna go spool some reels up.